The connection, and, and, I, and I want you to write this down for those who take notes. I want, I want to highlight tonight the connection between servitude and blessings. Amen. There is an inescapable, obvious connection between serving the Lord, working in the church, yea, even serving the man of God or the woman of God. In this case, your pastor or those who are standing for the Lord, there's a connection between serving that person and being blessed of God and having your needs need met. It's an inescapable connection. So the, we'll be dealing with the same story tonight, but stressing uh, different things. Last Sunday, when preaching from uh, Luke chapter uh, 4, we st uh, spent a lot of time on, on Nazareth and Jesus' hometown and what he did when he went into the temple and his customs and all that. Uh, that those, those tracks are laid. We won't talk about that tonight, but I, I want you to see that there is a connection between serving in the kingdom and being blessed and, and, and carrying out your duty. When you do that which the Lord has assigned to you. The Lord will do what he promised. I hold that many of us are not waiting on the Lord to bless us. For many of us, God is waiting on us to bless us. Amen. He's not the holdup. We're the holdup. And if we will uh, obey him and follow his divine instructions, then you will see uh, God moving in your life, divine activity like we haven't seen because the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save. Isaiah 59 and 1. And neither is his ear heavy that he cannot hear. And so well, what is it if we're waiting on God and we're looking for these interventions? What's slowing us down? The Bible says your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have caused him to hide his face from you. It's not that the Lord has gotten lazy. You know, people say, well, we don't see the miracles like we used to see them. We don't see this and that like we used to. Well, the Lord hadn't quit. And the Lord is certainly not weaker. Praise the Lord. So then if it's not him, then we have to look another way. Let's go uh, back in time. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 17. Let's go to Sarepta, uh, called Zarephath in the Hebrew, uh, a city 100 miles northwest of Kinnereth, which is where God sent the prophet Elijah. Now, all of this, while you turn getting 1 Kings, all of this took place uh, in... It all started in the northern kingdom in Samaria. This is where uh, Elijah challenges uh, Ahab and, uh, and tells Ahab that there will be no dew nor rain uh, until I say differently. And then the Lord uh, tells the prophet to go about 35 miles north uh, east uh, up toward uh, uh, Kinnereth in, in the ravine there and to hide there. And the Lord uh, gives the prophet uh, specific instructions. Now, what's interesting, as we study tonight, you will see a, a, a constant refrain. And the refrain is um, um, the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. That Bible you have. The word of the Lord. Preaching and, and expounding the word has got to be, uh, has got to hold a very important place in your life. 
in, in order to serve the Lord. We can't serve the Lord without knowing the word of the Lord. One of the things that, 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 that is amazing to me now is how many of our people are beginning to question the validity of Scripture. I was talking with someone today, and the brother was telling me how uh, a lady had, had said to him uh, about two years ago, uh, I don't see anything in the Bible that, that speaks against perversion. And you wonder what Bible were they reading. And so he, he uh, uh, sent her uh, the link with me and uh, uh, brother, uh, yes, me and uh, uh, you, brother preacher. Man, and, and she saw the link and saw the scripture and heard your testimony and all that. And after convinced that we didn't take the scriptures out of context and that we weren't in error in terms of what the Bible says, you know what the person did? They, 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 they did something that we're beginning to see more and more now. They moved the goalposts and then began to question the authority of the scripture. So, so once you show them that the Bible says this, then the next thing you hear, well, who wrote the Bible? Man wrote the Bible. Do you see what's going on? Now, part of this, and you won't like it, part of this, because look, some things I know, part of this is a curse that God has placed on people. Now, let me tell you, what we see before the tribulation, we will see in dribbles and in small pieces parts of the tribulation that will take place in spades during the tribulation. One of the things that the Bible says will happen during the tribulation is that not the devil, but God will send men strong delusions that they would believe a lie, that they all might be condemned who received not the love of the truth. It's a dangerous thing to see God's truth, know God's truth, read God's truth, and then reject God's truth. Because here's what happens Here's how the Lord deals with you once you know, once you see, once he knows you're convinced. If after you know, you still reject it, what he does is he gives you in spades who or what you rejected him for. The Bible says in Romans, when they took God's truth and converted it into birds, Four-footed bees. Am I right? It says, for this cause, God gave them over. It's okay. You're going to take my truth. You know it's my truth. Bible says, the Bible tells in Romans 1 that they knew God, right? So the Bible says, for when they knew God, knew God, not that they really didn't know. No, it says clearly, knew God. What did they do? They glorified him not as God. Now, th th this was not about people who didn't know God. This was, uh, this was written about people who knew God. Now, the Bible says, all right, what did the Lord do? You see a constant refrain. He gave them over. He gave them over. He gave them over. Well, a dangerous thing is to know God's truth and reject it. Because what happens then is God adds blindness. Is that not what happened? What Romans chapter 11 says that God did to Israel? Blindness, is that, is that not what the Bible says, have happened to Israel. All right? Now, look at what we've done. We know, we, we knew, we knew before 2008, we knew God's truth. Knew the Bible. We were the experts. We we're holiness. Speaking in tongues, people. We knew the Bible. We know what the Bible says about certain things. Did we not? But for eight years, we act like we didn't know. Supported people, I won't call names, who promoted policies that were against scripture, but we found ways to support them anyway. You know what God is doing now? He's sending blindness. 
Nobody gonna tell you this, but Patrick wouldn't. But I'm telling you, and and, and it, it 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 will put a chill in the house. It's blindness. You be careful when you know the truth. Bible says to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not. To him it is a sin. Bible says if they have tasted of the good word of God. And then they fall away. It is impossible to restore them again. Oh, it's a big price you pay when you know and act like you don't know. Good teaching tonight, isn't it? Blindness. Blindness has happened. Blindness. We, we now argue for policies that are against us. And we fight programs that's designed to help. That's blindness. The blind man fights the hand that's reached out to try to pull it to safety. Oh, I'm teaching you good. It's, it, it's just hard to hear. You cannot, in the kingdom, in spiritual things, I've, I've said it for years, you cannot take uh, moral authority, you cannot take your spiritual awareness and take it off and set it to the side uh, for as long as it's convenient and then all of a sudden try to take it up again. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. And we, we'll give an example after example. Esau tried it. I'm hungry. What good is this birthright to me right now? I want food. He gave it away, but he came back after it. Couldn't get it. Judas turned the money back in. They said, we don't want it. He threw it on the floor. He repented. Too late. Blindness. Because we knew better. Arguing for abortion. Siding with those who are for same-sex marriage. Siding with those who say homosexuality is all right. And finding ways with your sanctified self to cast your lot and support evil personified. The response of Yahweh is that he sends blind. Now, if y'all don't give a dime tonight, I will not take it back. I'm telling you what happened. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because I've been telling you all the while. Praise the Lord. Now, here we are. It happened. Watch this. Here we are in 1 Kings chapter 17. Uh, Zarephath, 100 miles northwest of, uh, of Kinnereth. All right? Now, Zarephath was in Sidon, and uh, it was, praise the Lord, on the border of Israel, out on the Mediterranean Sea. Now, remember, the word of the Lord, I said that's the constant uh, frame. After, in verse 2, notice this. Verse 2 says, and the word of the Lord came to him, saying, get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself uh, by the brook Kinnereth, uh, that is before Jordan. So he goes north from Samaria. He goes northeast and he hides there. And look at what God says to the man of God. And it shall be that thou shalt drink from the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Now you know that's supernatural. God says I've commanded the ravens, dumb creatures. Amen. Dumb creatures that are naturally afraid of humans. The Lord is mighty. Ravens normally even reject, neglect their own young. Afraid of humans, known for neglecting their own young and very dumb creatures, and yet the Lord says, I've commanded them. See, the Lord can send you a blessing anywhere. Because see, Elijah was standing for the Lord. So when you stand for the Lord, you put the Lord in a place where the Lord's the Lord's going to look out for you because, you know, El Turner taught us long, a long time ago, if you put God's business first, 
Take care of God's business and the Lord will take care of yours. See, what has happened is the devil has made us all self-preservationists. But the Lord ever called you to self-preservation. The Lord have called us all to take care of his business. You take care of his business, he'll take care of yours. So he, he begins to uh, inter, uh, intervene for uh, Elijah in a supernatural way. Why? Because Elijah did something. He did something at a time when it needed to have been done. Chapter 16, verse 29 says, And in the 30th uh, at 30th and 8th year of Asa, king of Judah, began Ahab, the, the son of Omri, uh, to reign over Israel. All right, you see that? And Ahab, the son of uh, Omri, reigned over Israel in Samaria 20 and 2 years. Ahab was the son of Omri. Look at this. He did that which was, he did evil in the, in the sight of the Lord. Now, the evil, when you read why it says they did evil in the sight of the Lord, that is a technical term. The evil that they are referencing is idolatry. In the Old Testament, the greatest evil was the evil of idolatry. The worshiping of false gods. And think about it. It makes sense because in the worshiping of this, these gods, you find the culture of the people of the lands tied to the worshiping of this, these false gods. You know, people try to separate Islam from ISIS and from these other terror groups. But that is a part of that doctrine. I mean, that's just the truth. And that's why you see uh, these things just about everywhere this religion spreads because religions carry their own culture. That's why the Lord said when you go into the land, be careful. There are complex religious systems. There are gods. There are systems. There are false gods. There are organized religious systems that are already there and they are all older than Judaism. As a matter of fact, when the Lord sent the Israel into the land of promise, most of Judaism had not even been formulated because Daniel wasn't even alive yet. The book of Isaiah and all the books that helped form the Old Testament didn't even exist. These were pre-existent. So people come to you and they talk about uh, other religions that are older than Christianity, older than Judaism. We, we, we know that. The Bible teaches. We read about it. But all of these religions carry a culture. They carried immorality. They carried wickedness. They, that, that was perversion as a part of their worship. You know, notice how yoga has invaded our culture. Well, that is the worshiping of false gods. And, and look at how it has changed us, you know, from the way we worship to even down to what we wear. Sanctify, we strap, put on the yoga pants and we feel so good and there we go. So, but, but, but that stuff comes from a religious teaching that you won't find in your religion. It's amazing the invasion of idolatry. I could teach all night just talking about the influence of that other gods have on us. And the lack of influence that we have on them. I don't have enough time. Ahab, the son of Omri, did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. He was the most wicked thus far. He topped them. And it came to pass. Now notice how this is written. As if it had been a light thing. As though it was insignificant for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son, the son of Nebat. And you know, the sins of Jeroboam was idolatry. Jeroboam, listen, listen. When he took over the northern kingdom, and you know, when Israel split, it split on the Jeroboam and Rehoboam, right? You Bible students, you know that. Jeroboam set up a shadow, an alternative religious system to Judaism. 
every worship day that they had in the southern kingdom, Jeroboam set up an alternate worship day in the northern kingdom. Jeroboam set up priests. He took drunks, lewd men, low lives, and made them priests and leaders and set up a false religious system, he was afraid for the people in the northern kingdom to even go back down to the, uh, to the southern kingdom to worship on special worship days. His fear was that they would go down and stay. So he set up alternatives. That was the sin of Jeroboam, the son of Nubat. If we had time, we could read it together, but turn this uh, on your own time, 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 25 through 33. You'll see what he's talking about. Well, now Ahab, already, as bad as what Jeroboam did, Ahab, he treated Jeroboam's uh, wickedness uh, like it was a light thing, and then he goes to the next level. All right? And look at what we've done. See, Patrick Wooden got to be around. The Lord will let me live to keep reminding you. We redefined marriage. We are killing the unborn. We, uh, praise the Lord, are taking positions and we're trying to treat it like it's an insignificant thing. Why don't you let that go? I cannot. Because God can't. You can't do these things. You will, look at this weather. It's 70 degrees one day and 40 degrees the next. We're doing good. There's no worse than that. Because we treated it, we have treated this stuff like it's a light thing. But it wasn't, it's not a light thing in the eyes of the Lord. Not everybody's protesting. You got illegals marching, demanding that they want to tell the police how to police them. We demand that you don't ask whether or not we are legally here or not. We demand that, what? You are illegal. But the country had in its strength, they put them in jail. But we're weak because blindness. Oh, my. See, when a, when a nation, we need to pray for revival. When a nation begins to weaken, you see stuff like this, and there's no recourse. Anarchists break out people's windows and and, and they, 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 they wreck people's businesses and nobody gets arrested. And the police even stand back and watch. Oh, this is not a good sign. It's not good. Well, well, well are we going to arrest everybody? You ought to arrest everybody who does it. Everybody who did it, but put them in jail. Well, we'll run out of jail. No, don't build no more. Stack them in there. <laughs> Stack them in there. So that's cruel and unusual. Call it what you will or may. Now, it's not going to happen because, this, you know, the system, you know, praise the Lord. You know, you'd be surprised who's behind this stuff. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Now, look at this. Uh, he gets, gets even uh, more wicked. Um, Jeroboam, the son of uh, Nebeth, he says, so, like, it's a, it's a light thing to be as wicked as Jeroboam was. He says that he took the wife, he took to wife, one of the most wicked women in the Bible, probably the most wicked, Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbel, king of the Zidonians, and went, notice what she did, notice her influence, as soon as she married him. Look at this, he went and served Baal. Now the God that Ahab, king of Samaria was supposed to be worshiping was Yahweh. But he could not get Jezebel to serve Yahweh. But the moment he married her, she must have put something on him. Next thing I know, he's worshiping Baal. Oh, Baal. It's right there. He marries this woman and he goes and he serves. Look at this. He institute Baal worship. He propagates Baal worship throughout the northern kingdom. Baal, uh, headquarters for Baal, headquarters number one was the land of the Zidonians. Zidonians, 
the Phoenicians. You remember the Sarah Phoenician woman who came to Jesus? The Phoenicians. And we've got many uh, contributions from the Phoenicians. Uh, they, they, were, they were wizards and w wickedness, but also, but we get the alphabet from the Phoenicians. There are many things that good that came from them. But this Baal worship was not good. And he marries her. He institutes Baal worship. And look at this. And he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of uh, in the house of Baal, which he built in Samaria. So now you see all of, like we see today, tolerance, and we have all of these religions and all of these gods. Now, you know, the God of the Bible, the God who made his country great, is amazed at the spiritual adultery that's going on. Because, see, America now is screwing everybody. Cheating on God big time. Everybody gets, all these religions gets respect, except the one who made this country great. Praise the Lord. Here it is right here. And he reared up these altars unto Baal and, and, uh, and, 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 and built the stuff in Samaria. And Ahab made a grove. Grove here is, it deals with the hedges and stuff that was built up as they, they erected temples to the god Asherah. And uh, Asherah, this false god was associated, listen to this, with passion. All right? And uh, uh, Asherah was uh, uh, supposed to be associated with passion and with the sea. And uh, Asherah was supposed, supposed to be the wife of El, who was the mother of Baal. And the priests who participated in Asherah worship were effeminate men who, who had sex and who got with each other. So now we got Asherah, the, the groves, punks, running around in Samaria doing their thing. Look at this. Are you with me? Verse 33. And Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel before him. He went too far. I wonder, have we gone too far? With all this stuff you see going on today didn't start today. If you think that this just happened as a result of the elections back in November, you don't understand how things work. Look at where we are today. Everybody's protesting. We're, we're a grievance society. Everybody's mad. We, somebody dropped a hot dog. Let's march. And the media is fueling this stuff. Thank you for watching God First with Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. and the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. To experience this message in its entirety, call 877-463-3477 to purchase a DVD or CD. God First will return next week at the same time. Until then, make every day a God First day. God First.